So we are here today to uh, learn about the basic concepts of object-oriented programming. If you remember right, in our previous video, we learned the difference between uh, structure and object-oriented programming. And we uh, analyzed the advantages and disadvantages of uh, both the type of programming paradigms. So it's clearly up to the user to select any one among them and uh, make it possible for future programming. So before we define uh, what is object-oriented programming, let's uh, try to understand the different concepts that surround this object-oriented programming. And finally, we can come to a conclusion what it is defined as. So moving further, uh, these are all the concepts that are uh, in object-oriented programming. So let's get started with the help of the first concept, object. So what do we mean by an object? Objects are uh, real runtime entities that uh, that is around us. So whatever that is around you can be called as an object uh, unless until it has got its own property, which technically we call it as attributes. And uh, with the help of those properties, we can do some kind of operations or functionalities. What do you mean by properties and uh, functionalities here? So let's uh, take an example of a car. So if you take a car, uh, we can uh, define a lot of attributes related to this car. For example, the color of the car can be one of the attribute and uh, maybe the weight of the car and uh, the company that makes the car, we can call it as the make of the car and so on. So when we speak about the color of the car, we will have certain values for them. So let's say it could be red or blue or whatever and weight could be some kind of a value like you know, 50 kgs or 100 kgs and so on. And uh, even the make could be like, you know, uh, Tata and uh, Hyundai and so on. So each and every attribute will have certain set of values defined with them. So any object will have a set of attributes and also a value attached to them. So apart from these attributes, we can even have operations related to these attributes or related to the object. For example, with the help of a car, I can have an operation called as drive. Operations are nothing else, but uh, it's kind of a functionality, that's it. And also I can uh, have an uh, operation called as accelerate. Yeah, that is also a function. And even we can have another function called as uh, braking. Yeah, we want to stop the car, you go for braking. So all the other operations are uh, you know, related to this car. So any object which qualifies these two things, one is it should have a set of attributes with it. And also it should have a set of operations. Then we can call them as an object. So that's why I initially told you whatever you see around you will be an object. And when you want to build softwares, you need to get the help of these objects because you know that softwares are built upon problems and problems are nothing else but uh, inputs and outputs and processing. Okay. So when we get inputs and processing units, and those are based on objects that is around us. For example, let's take a, a problem of uh, no, writing a software for a library. So when you want to write a software for a library, you want to manage this library. Then definitely you have to access all the objects that surrounds this library. So one among those objects is book. Book is an object that is present inside library and apart from that we can have racks that could be an object. So when you speak about book, book has got different attributes. So let's say we can have uh, no, the number of pages in a book that could be an attribute and also the weight of a book, yeah, that could be an attribute, the color of the no, for cover of that book, no, that could be an attribute. So when you take these attributes, definitely you should have some values. So the number of pages could be like I can have 500 pages in my book and the weight of the book can be like, you know, uh, 0.25 kgs or something like that. And the color of the cover page of the book can be like, you know, brown or some mixed colors. So when we take a book, we can have different attributes associated with it. And what about the, pro the operations uh, based on a book? I can read from a book. Yeah, that is one of the operation. Then we can arrange the pages of a book. That is another operation. We can get data out of a book or even if possible, we can even write to a book. So all these things are operations that are based on a book. So objects are nothing else, but they are real time entities that surrounds us. And each and every object should have an attribute associated with it. Along with that attribute, definitely we should have some data or value. The attributes are also called as data members, as you can see here. And also, apart from attributes, we should also have operations or functions, or we can call it as functionalities. Now, moving further, when we have a, a set of objects or set of similar objects, so those set of similar objects, we can call it as a class. For example, what I try to have here is uh, we have uh, a set of objects which are similar in nature, like boy, girl, and man and woman. 
so they have certain kind of similarity like uh, each uh, every boy and girl they will have a name they can have an a age and they can have a sex or gender and the operations related to them and also common among them could be like they can speak they can listen and they can walk so what if we if we can gather all these objects and put under a common heading so we can call them as human class or we can call them as person class okay a class is something which has got a set of similar objects okay and also the data inside a class will vary it cannot be the same data type always so also we can call this class as an abstract data type okay so for example we can take another class let's say we have a class called as vehicle so what are all the different objects that can be present inside a vehicle like you know we can have car we can have bike and we can have van and truck each and every object will have its own attribute and operations but there could be some kind of a similarity because uh, all of them are used to transport something or all of them are uh, having a common functionality called uh, drive or no move from one location to another location and so on so when we have a set of similar objects we simply call them as a class so even we can have another uh, class called as polygon which are like multi shaped okay so all these shapes come under a common category called as polygon but each and every shape has got its own property and they have their own attribute as well as their own operations or functionalities so that's how we define a class so class is was an abstract data type because it involves a lot of different data types and also it encloses data and functions into a single unit so you have a single class name and under that class name we will have a set of similar objects so class is nothing else but it's a collection of similar objects hope it is understood so moving further this is the third property what we are going to discuss uh, this is kind of a virtual property but uh, uh, what does it say uh, encapsulation is a mechanism that associates the code and the data and keeps them safe from external interference so what do we mean by this so the data and uh, the operations that are present inside a class is really secure so if you want to use these data and operations out of this class then it means that we have to get the permission of this class so that's how your object oriented programming is framed so that's why we call them as a secured programming language or no secured programming paradigm and this security is applied by a property called as encapsulation so encapsulation is nothing else but you know protecting your data and uh, code and keeping them safe from external interference or misuse and this is obtained by the concept called as class and also with the help of another concept called as access specifiers which you will be learning in the near future so no need to worry about this now as of now you just understand the concept here so encapsulation is just tying up of your data and operations into a single unit the class is the main component which will help us to perform this encapsulation so moving on further we will have another concept called as data abstraction so by the name itself we can understand what is meant by this and this data abstraction is closely related to another uh, concept called as uh, data hiding so we can even uh, have a synonymous meaning between these two so what do you mean by data abstraction if you remember uh, in your previous video we had a example of an atm and uh, we had uh, two different views for an atm like in a perspective of a programmer and in a perspective of a normal user who is just uh, uh, who, who just you know uh, transacts the amount and uh, he does the regular job of a normal user whereas a programmer sees an atm in a different perspective according to him it's a set of codes and set of instructions so the point here is the codes and instructions are hidden from a user's perspective because his job is not to code or his job is not to worry about how an atm works and so on his job is just to insert the card and take the cash away so as per the user's perspective he should not be given the view of a code or a program so we are trying to hide the program and code from the user's view so according to the user's view in his window he will be receiving certain statements like please enter the pin please enter or insert the card that's it he won't be given a view where he will be having the codes and java codes or whatever code you have written to build that atm so this is what we call it as data abstraction so when you take an example of a car you cannot you don't show how a car works or you don't tell how a car works or, or what are all the you know uh, physical properties of applying a brake and everything to a normal person who uses a car okay so for a normal driver he knows if he presses the brake pedal 
okay if he presses the brake pedal the car will stop and also if he presses the accelerator uh, pedal the car will move on so according to him all the data that is or all the scientific data that is related to acceleration or related to braking is totally hidden what is shown to him is a small pedal so when he presses that the car stops or there is another small pedal when he presses that uh, the car moves on and there is a gear knob we will not talk about uh, what happens if I insert the first gear or what happens when I you know, move to the second gear. He just knows that if he wants to increase the speed, he moves to the second gear and he keeps on pressing the accelerator pedal. So that's how we uh, uh, work here. So when you want to hide certain data from the user's perspective, so this process is what we call it as data abstraction. So put it simple, data abstraction is a process of hiding the unwanted data from the person or no, from the user who doesn't need the data for it. Okay. So maybe we can take a small uh, activity here. You consider your home and imagine you are going to swap your home for a week with your new friend. So you just write on what all the things you would tell them about your home. And also parallel you write them what all the things that you won't tell them. As far as I'm concerned, uh, what I do, what I will tell him that I will tell him my address, then I will tell him the basic list of rooms, like the number of rooms available, and also which key he has to use to open the room. But uh, what I would not tell him, it's like uh, he's at uh, least bothered about the color of the walls, what I have, the seats, the number of seats in the sofa, what I have, because I'm just going to rent him for like one or two months. As far as he is concerned, he, he should be uh, flexible with the address, he should be uh, easily you know, uh, knowledgeable based on the number of rooms what he has. But he need not worry about the well, color of the walls or the seats in the sofa because these kind of extra data will overload him and this data is really useless information for him. So your programming strategy should also work in such a way that when you use object oriented programming, your program should be having a kind of abstraction between the person who creates the code and the person who uses your program. So that's the idea here. So the person who uses your program should be totally abstracted from the in detail codes or in detail information. Okay, so because those informations are really overloading him and according to him they are useless. Maybe we can take another example here. Uh, let's say uh, let's say we have another small activity like a person who uses a television or the television remote. He need not know about how the remote works, whether it works with you no know, infrared or no other kind of frequency. But what he knows is that if he presses a button in a remote, the TV switches on. If he presses another button, the TV switches off. So these kind of internal details are hidden from the user who uses your TV. So that's the understanding about data abstraction. Moving further, now the next property what we have here or the next concept of object oriented programming is inheritance, which is really an important concept. Now what is inheritance? Inheritance is a process by which one class derives or obtains a property of one or more classes. So that this avoids total repetition. So what I'm trying to say here is let's say we have a class called as parent. Okay. And let's say we have another class called as child. Okay. And we need uh, we need to write a program where we need to maintain the family information. Okay. So in your parent class, you will have information about the parent's name, their address, and their occupation. Let's take in for an example. And let's say the child's class has got the child's name and his school name. Okay. Now if you want to maintain the information of the family, and uh, if you want to uh, get the information from the child's class, then you can put the child's name inside. And after this you need the father's name so instead of getting the father's name again and again what you can do is you can get the parents details and you can take that into the child's class so the child class is deriving the information from the parent class so the parent class has got the default detail like name address and occupation of the parents so there is no need for us to get the details again because it is already obtained in the parent class our only job is to get the details from the parent class to the child class so this process of deriving the details from one class to another class is what we call as inheritance. Maybe we can understand this with the help of another small example. So if you want to write the details of a uh, car called as uh, Ford Figo. Okay. So you know when there is uh, specific details about uh, what is this engine and uh, how many liters or whether it's a diesel or uh, whether it's a petrol kind. 
but if you want to get the information about the parent like the Ford company and you want to merge that along with this car's detail then instead of getting the details of Ford here what you can do is that you can derive the detail of this class called as Ford and you can put the details inside your child class so ultimately what we are trying to do here is we are avoiding repetition or we are avoid we are trying to reuse the information that is already present here so this property of reusing or deriving the information from one class to another class is called as inheritance so this you can understand with the help of lot more examples when you do the exact programs in future so as of now the class from which the data has been derived is what we call it as the base class the class to which the data is copied to is called as the derived class. Okay. Hope it is understood. We will move to the next topic. So this is one of the important concept we call it as polymorphism. Uh, let's take an example so that you can understand it better. Uh, let's say we have an operator plus. We know that the usual uh, functionality of this plus operator is to add two numbers. Okay. Now if it is possible for us to concatenate two string elements let's say I have my first name and I have my last name okay now if I want to join these two strings and if that is possible with the help of this plus operator then that will be easier for me because according to the normal mathematical logic plus is used to just add two numbers but what we are trying to do here is we are going to give some extra functionality to this plus operator this time the extra functionality is to concatenate two strings or simply you can say like add two strings okay usually the operator plus is used to add two numbers but this time we are also making it to add two string elements or two words to be very simple so like this if you are able to make one operator to do many functionalities or one element in your program to do many functionalities we call them as polymorphism in a similar fashion uh, let's say we have uh, a function okay a function that calculates the area of a square okay and we have another function that calculates the area of a rectangle let's say we have another function that calculates the area of a triangle now instead of having three different functions to calculate uh, the area of three different shapes we can have a common function called as area and can make sure that this function can calculate any one of these shapes area based on the input given to this function so what we are trying to do here is we are having a single function which can do multiple functionality. So this type of concept is what we call it as polymorphism where it allows a single name or operator to be associated with different operations based on the type of data passed to it. So based on the type of shape passed to this function it adapts itself to calculate whether it has to calculate the area of a square or whether to calculate the area of a rectangle or a triangle. Hope that's clear. So these are some of the concepts what we have seen today. So the major concepts what we have seen here is object class which is a collection of objects. Then we have gone through some kind of encapsulation where it you know uh, joins the data and code into a single unit called as class. Then we went through data abstraction it's similar to data hiding where we hide certain unwanted details from the user who doesn't need those details. So inheritance is a property by which we get the details from one class and use it in another class. Then we have polymorphism where we have one operator or one element doing multiple functionalities. Then apart from these we have three simple other concepts which are like message passing and communication. Then delegating the work of one object to another object. Then uh, making the object concepts as general concepts. This is more or less related to inheritance. So that's it for today. So hope uh, you had a good session.